Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Today's upload is going to be a Enzo Outlook, Enzo discussion, um, <clears throat> whatever you want to, uh, you know, classify it as, but we'll be talking about the Enzo, which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation, and how it will be impacting this winter, <clears throat> and what are our, you know, what are the latest, um, up-to-date uh, additions on this so let's get right into this but before we do really consider subscribing to this channel consider liking this video consider dr you know dropping a like um, leaving a really nice comment that always makes my day and yes I read every single comment so you know maybe I not respond to every or don't heart every single comment um, I read every comment it gives me notification <laughs> and I always go back to the video I uploaded and read through every comment so uh, you know I read every comment you say, uh, you're right, so have that guarantee. Last time was updated, or uh, anything of this was uh, 26th of August, but the main details, <clears throat> the main, you know, the Enzo, the La Nina, the things we are lo really looking for are updated the second Thursday of the month. So that was around <clears throat> two weeks ago, I think, uh, but I don't know if I've made an up update video since then, so I decided to make one. As you can see right now, Enzo neutral conditions are present. I remember I telling you this, guys, on a separate video in one of my forecasts, but I don't remember if I said it in this particular video like an Enzo discussion video. But yes, an Enzo neutral conditions are present, which <clears throat> uh, have m several different impacts on fall and winter pattern. Here's how a typical uh, winter pattern looks like. Uh, uh, let's see if we can blow this up. Okay, uh, this is what a t uh, typical uh, neutral uh, pattern looks like for the uh, winter. And you can see it's between a La Nina and El Nino. And <clears throat> it usually... Um, <clears throat> Sorry, it usually uh, brings down pretty chilly air into the eastern U.S., especially the northeastern U.S. La Nina. Um, this one is a little bit, I don't know why this one uh, it has it, but some um, more, the more typical model you'd see is the, 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 the jet stream during a neutral winter to go through the northwest and through the northern U.S. Um, let's draw this out for you guys. During a La Nina, we'd see something... Not that. <clears throat> I want more of a pen. There we go. A typical La Nina jet stream is something like this. Maybe not getting as far south as I drew it right there, but it definitely hits that northwest corridor. <clears throat> During a neutral, as you can see, it drives deeper into the south and east, but um, it really misses out the west, and that's what we've been seeing so far. That's what leads me to think that um, the northwest this winter won't be too awfully warm, <clears throat> or won't be too awfully cold, won't see too much snow. However, again, if we go back to this presentation, we could see that <clears throat> it's not all, you know, facing or showing one direction. Some models are showing a La Nino. Some models are showing a El Nino, a weak El Nino. Most models are showing a neutral. <clears throat> but, you know, despite what most models are showing, we still got to factor in the possibilities because that's what sometimes, you know, that's what sometimes the models switch to over a period of time. <clears throat> and you can see that over, uh, these are the different Nino regions. And the ones that were uh, warming for the past week, <clears throat> uh, you can see 0 0.8 was a Nino 4, which is the furthest one out. And the ones that were cooling are the uh, the one that is that are closest to South America. So see, that leads us to think that it's more of a La Nina pattern if these end up warming up and these, uh, you know, cool. But see, because these are warming up, these are cooling, it's more of a neutral because <clears throat> we have to have these also be uh, in the cooling phase. Again, granted, this is weekly, so this changes weekly to weekly. But if we were to look at the monthly, that would be more accurate. And I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. The last four weeks, this is about equal to a month. <clears throat> and you can see the global sea surface temperature departures in the last month. And you can see it's been slightly cooler across as you get towards the eastern Pacific Ocean, but the western Pacific Ocean has been getting warmer. So <clears throat> it gets, you know, it gets a little bit confusing and it sometimes takes a little bit of a little bit of uh, pondering and science and research, but also, you know, we can't predict everything, but at this point, it seems like a neutralist, you know, in hold, and it will hold itself for quite a while because of those imbalance of those temperatures. <clears throat> but uh, if, you know, if one thing goes and the ocean temperatures start warming rapidly, we could end up with a weak El Nino. If the ocean temperatures cool a little bit more than we expected, we can end up with a La Nina. So that is, <clears throat> you can see that, I mean, that is, that would be, you know, very interesting to see. And uh, if you were also to look at, I want to point out, look at this, uh, during the last four weeks, look at this above average warming across north uh, the Gulf of Mexico of, <clears throat> of North America. And the reason why this winter could be a snowy one, and, you know, and why it could be very cold and snowy, that's what the title of this video is, is because uh, one factor, the La Nina and El Nino, uh, La Nina possibly 
possible La Nina, most likely neutral, I already showed you. It gets pretty chilly across the uh, east and central and northern portion of the country. However, notice also this Gulf of Alaska high pressure. <clears throat> this amplifies the heat in the west, but amplifies the chill or the cold or the bitter cold or the arctic blasts in the winter time for the east. So let me... Uh, <clears throat> Let me see if I could pull something up here. So let's just try zooming in on this and let's see if I could draw it out on here. So uh, I want to try decreasing the thickness, but um, <clears throat> I don't know how to do that. Okay, but basically we have a high pressure right here and this is due to the warm, t uh, warm waters. Uh, warm air rises, it forms a dome and this high pressure just forms very <clears throat> calm weather. All the storms go above it and where the storms go, usually you could find a jet stream. So then... <clears throat> it's a direct relationship, and you can see that this jet stream um, would do something like this. You can see miss most of the west, so that would mean that the high pressure expands uh, into the west with its warm, calm air, but then it dives down into the <clears throat> into the eastern U.S. And you may be wondering, well, why doesn't it just do that? Well, it wants to equal itself to where it was um, beginning. So think about like. A seesaw. If a seesaw would want to balance itself and it started off like this, and you let go on this side, it would first do this. And then, you know, given, let's say theoretically this was uh, equal on both sides in weight, um, you know, usually seesaws end up sitting in one position like this or that. But if a seesaw ended up like this and it was equal, then it went down like that and it would slowly lose its slope more and more and more till it was flat. I hope you know what I'm talking about. And that's the same thing with the jet stream. At first it does a very uh, big loop to avoid these warm temperatures. But then in order to equal itself out, it goes further than it wants to. And then once it gets into Europe, it goes becomes more zonal. <clears throat> you know, equaling itself out. And that's kind of like the seesaw example. Or I'm sure there's many examples we could find this with, like a rubber band. Uh, you know, if you pull it, uh, pull it down, it will shoot up. But then it will go down a little bit more, but less. You know, uh, then it will go up, but less. Then it will go down, but less. And then up and down, and it will become steady. That's kind of what the jet stream does. And while, you know, while this occurs, <clears throat> this is what Mother, Mother Nature's rubber band is. And we get all this cold air in the eastern U.S. And along this cold air, we get, <clears throat> we get uh, Alberta clippers, which could produce a bunch of snow. And sometimes when you have a subtropical jet stream coming in <clears throat> from the south, it could combine with the jet stream, the polar one that's going south. And uh, it could produce big storms across the northeast coast, which could, you know, bring the snowy aspect, make it even more amplified. <clears throat> so that is another feature I'd like to look, you know, I wanted to show you. Let's see if we could zoom out now. Another one uh, I just want to show you is <clears throat> the uh, base. Here's a bunch. I mean, there's a bunch of things that we could look at and identify, but... I just don't have time for this, and frankly, I'm sorry, but uh, some of this stuff I don't know exactly what this is. I know what the Madden Journal, uh, Journal, uh, Jul Julian Oscillation is, but like, say this, uh, I would have to look into this, and I don't know, know it off the top of my head what the pattern and the rule is. But um, some of these things I'd like to show, but they're just, and you can see like this, this is just previous ones. I just don't have time to fit this in this 10 minute video. <clears throat> and you can see that this is uh, the historical La Nina El Nino episode, so as you can see, last winter was an El Nino, but still a very weak El Nino but brought bitter, bitter, bitter cold temperatures into the eastern U.S. And I mean, we've recorded here in the state of Illinois the record of negative 38 degrees. 39, I think, the record was... No, 38, the record was 36. <clears throat> so that was, you know, with an El Nino, which may surprise some folks. And you can see Enzo Neutral is most likely to continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter 2019-2020. <clears throat> I wouldn't say, you know, I want to be so confident. I wouldn't say most likely yet. Like, I mean, you can see that these, uh, these things are updated for a reason, but I would say... And I would see the same exact line, but through the Northern Hemisphere fall. I mean, I think that's going to be almost a 100% chance. However, <clears throat> for the winter time, maybe a La Nina. You know, we may be looking at a La Nina pattern. You can see that, <clears throat> if anything, it would be more of El Nino. But some of the models are starting, you can see, to show a La Nina. Uh, this hasn't been... Uh, Shown early, and this is actually updated in August of nineteenth. Uh, <clears throat> so that was like that uh, second Thursday of the month. You know, we'll be going to the second Thursday of September soon enough, in around two weeks. And I think we'll start shift shifting some of these models to the south, and that that's what makes this interesting and fun.
Let me quickly point out where the El Nino is, the qualification for an El Nino and a La Nina. This is what classifies as a La Nina, anything up below that. So you can see one model, and you can see uh, this is what classifies an El Nino, several models. But then you can see a majority of them, like a frenzy of them, are in the neutral. So again, if you were to look at a neutral, we could see, let's exit out of that, you could see that um, we would see those cool cold conditions across the east with that amplified ridge in the west bringing warm conditions to the west but also wet and warm to the south combined with that cold could produce big storms <clears throat> see and if you were to look at La Nina uh, we'd have to be chilly all across the ocean but it's basically what we have right now is only the chill across this part and then here we start getting into the warmer sections <clears throat> so that's you know a little bit different and if you were to look at the El Nino we definitely are not looking at El Nino now um, that's you know these are basically like perfect uh, examples specimens of La Nina El Nino you can see these are from different um, way far back because they're probably used uh, to represent, you know, the most classical El Nino, most classical La Nina is. And there could be many different setups where it's still cl classified as La Nina, but the one we're having right now isn't really, um, you know, a La Nina. It's, it's that neutral pattern. <clears throat> and if we were to look, this is basically, what is this? Uh, you can see this one, however, uh, is uh, issued the 26th of August. It's more updated. And you can see some more are showing the the... Uh, the the La Nina and very few are showing the El Nino only towards uh, the March April time frame it starts really going up with that that dashed line which is that average forecast ensemble mean mean you could see that it's uh, in the middle the neutral pattern uh, dominates through most of winter possibly you know going back into back and forth between a couple of phases but looking at a very chilly snowy winter um, and that's that's you know this is only one factor that ends up we could be looking you know we could look at many other things that are also agreeing with this so thank you guys so much for watching consider liking the video consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next episode see ya